to get warm. Spring is on its way and it's less than two weeks away and I am so excited and ready for it. I have been impatiently waiting for spring since February because we had some unseasonably warm weather in February. So that just kicked my impatientness up into high gear because I am ready for all the trees to bud back out. I am ready for all of my flowers to come and bloom. The daffodils are already in bloom and I have so many different varieties around here that my grandmother had planted. And I'm really grateful for that because they are absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to bring some of those in. But today, I hope that this video helps you get more mentally prepared for spring and also I just want to share my love of all the seasons with you and spring is one of my favorites. I feel like it is so romantic. It is the time where we can get back outside. We can get back in that warm sunshine, get more vitamin D and I don't know about you, but that makes me really, really happy. So I figured I would go ahead and share my top recommendations with you for spring with books, movies, TV shows, activities, and some treats as well. I got some really good treats for you coming up, but in in regular Hopi fashion, I think we should start out with books. Now, all of my Instagram knows how much I love books, but I think you, those of you who have been here since the very beginning, you know how much I love books as well. Let's start out this video with my one true love, and that is books, book recommendations. I feel like it's not spring, unless I'm referencing Beatrix Potter, of course, Peter Rabbit is the main one that I mostly think about when I think of spring, but also if you are a Beatrix Potter fan, then you know of some of her lesser known works such as Jemima Puddle Duck, Mom Kitten, Miss Tiggy Winkle, and so much more. I know her most famous one is Peter Rabbit, of course, and if you were like me, you probably read this one at school and that's where you found out about Beatrix Potter. I just have such fond memories and nostalgia of this book series and I absolutely love all of the little illustrations that are in her books but I definitely recommend Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Of course I have to mention Anne of Green Gables. I feel like that's an honorary mention because if you love books then I'm sure you have read Anne of Green Gables at some point in your life. We read this one, we were first introduced to it in elementary school and I just, I fell in love with the character Anne. I always felt like her, just an exorbitant love for all of the seasons and all of the things around her. And I love Ellen Montgomery's writing and she is more or less like Anne herself. So that's why her character Anne just resonated with so many people, but it's such a fantastic read for spring. I don't know about you, but I associate poetry with spring. And I think it's how the poems are written and constructed, but I always think of poems when it comes to spring because poems are just very romantic in nature and just the way that they describe things, it's very flowery. So I have The Essential, Emily Dickinson with an introduction by Joyce Carol Oates. We have E.E. E. Cummings, 73 poems. William Wordsworth, just a collection and selection of his poetry and then also Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Now with Walt Whitman's work, I would not consider this romantic by any stretch of the imagination, but I, you know, he, he does a lot of poetry, so I'm still gonna put him in here in the spring pile. So, <laughs> Emily Dickinson, however, perfect reads for spring. I love her use of language, and as you can see, I have multiple of her poems selected that I just absolutely loved. And I think this is a great thing to just take your blanket or your quilt outside under a shade tree when it hits the peak of spring, when it's warm to stay warm and just spend an afternoon just reading poetry and drinking tea under a shade tree. That just sounds so heavenly and so nice. <laughs> it's not a spring video unless we're mentioning something about Jane Austen and I do have more of her books to come later, but the Jane Austen Society, I am actually really excited to dive into this one. This one I actually found at a Goodwill and I've been it's been on my TBR for such a long time. So through this story, we are going to follow seven individuals who are each going through a struggle all on their own. And they love the words and the works of Jane Austen. And so together they rally behind each other and form the Jane Austen Society. I cannot wait to dive into this one for spring. <laughs> 
And since we just mentioned the Jane Austen Society, we might as well go ahead and mention the works of Jane Austen herself, Sense and Sensibilities, Pride and Prejudice, of course there's also Emma, and so many more. I just I, I just associate her with spring so, so much, and it's because I love her romantic writing. I love her style. Oh, I just, I love it all. These would be perfect to read for spring, and if you wanna know what edition this is, this is just the Peacock edition. I'll have a link down in the description below for this one. It's not spring unless we mention Howl's Moving Castle. More so, I feel like the movie I more associate with spring, but of course, you know, I have to mention the book. And Howl in the book is very different from Studio Ghibli Howl. Very, very different, but I highly recommend this one for spring too. This little gem that I picked up, actually at the beach, I think it was last year, it is called The Green Ember, and it's a series about these two rabbits, Heather and Pickett, and it just, it kind of feels Lord of the Ring-esque from the description on the back but it's bunnies and it's middle grade. So <laughs> if you're somebody who doesn't want to commit to something heavy for a fantasy book, I think this might be more up your alley. And it's, it's bunnies for spring. I mean, how much more spring-like can we get? But I'm really excited to dive into this one. I am also the kind of reader that just bounces all over the place from one genre to the next. So not only do I like to read classics, I like to read middle grade books, I like to read children's illustrated picture books, but I also like to read manga. And I think I Want to Eat Your Pancreas is a perfect fit for spring. Now this is a little sad, I will have to warn you, it is sad. This is the complete manga collection version. Uh, that way I didn't wanna like fill up what little space I have with a ton of mangas. So whenever I can find collections like this, I will grab onto them. And this is a story about an introverted high school boy who finds his classmate's diary and ends up finding out one of her darkest secrets, which is she has pancreatic cancer and she is not going to survive. The doctors have done everything that they can do for her and now they're just kind of waiting everything out. But he's not the kind of guy who's gonna strike up a friendship with her even after learning the deep dark secret that she has. But Sakura, her demeanor is so friendly, so warm and inviting that he little by little starts to open up and then they form an unlikely friendship. And it's just such a heartwarming story. And just the mention of the cherry blossoms in the story, as you see on the cover, like it's a big thing for her. And it's just such a good story. So great read for spring. I know, another sad one, I know. I, I don't know what it is with me. This has been going on since I was a kid. I love sad stories. I just, I like sad stories. I gravitate towards them. Not sure what that says about me, but here we are. <laughs> You've Reached Sam is actually such a good story and it follows a girl named Julie who has just lost her boyfriend, Sam, tragically. And the cherry blossoms play a huge part in the story. It's not just for decoration, but they do actually play a part in the story. And the way that Dustin Tao writes these books, like I just think that this is perfect for spring. It has such a cinematic feel to it. His writing is just so fluid. It almost feels like you can just, you can picture and see everything right in front of your eyes. That's how descriptive his words are. And I just, I absolutely love it. And I could not recommend this more for spring. It is sad, so just be warned, it is a sad book. Of course, another classic that I have to mention is The Secret Garden. This is another one that we also grew up with. Um, I think I actually watched the movie first, but Secret Garden absolutely perfect for springtime. We also have Tuck Everlasting, absolutely top, top, top tier. Although if you have watched the movie before the book, I will say it is vastly different because in the book, like they're supposed to be like 10 years old. And in the movie, you can see that they're definitely, they made them way older than that so they could intertwine a love story in there. So just keep that in mind if you want to read Tuck Everlasting. This one necessar isn't necessarily set in spring, but I think the series Before the Coffee Gets Cold would definitely be a great read for spring because of its slice of life nature. So basically there is a little magical cafe in Tokyo where it is rumored that you can go back in time. Now there are five rules that you have to follow and you have to come back before the coffee gets cold. I won't spoil what those rules are. I, I want you to read this and find out, but first book had me falling. It was so, so good, but because of the slice of life nature, that is why I am putting that under the spring category because it's just such an easy, 
easy, easy read. Another classic for spring would be The Enchanted April, which was first published in 1922 and translated, and it is set in an Italian medieval castle. This book has female friendship and also romance in it as well, and I think this is a perfect fit for spring. Another manga series that I think is absolutely perfect for spring is A Sign of Affection because, of course, it is romance and it is absolutely adorable, and there's an anime to go along with the book series, and I think it is absolutely adorable, and the next volume in the series, uh, volume eight, which I don't have seven yet, but I plan on getting it soon. But volume eight will be out in April and I'm so excited for it. It's just such a cute, easy read for spring and something that you can read in between your novels so that you don't get so burnt out. This is another one that's been on my TBR for quite some time and I'm really excited to dive into it for the spring and that is The Enchanted Life of Adam Hope and this story has magical realism in it and also the power of love as well. So I'm really excited to dive into this book and all of the books that I'm mentioning down today you can find down in the description bar below. I will have links to all the synopsis and everything so you might want to check it out in case this is something that you are interested in but I cannot wait to dive into this one. The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. This might be something that you're interested in. I actually ended up DNFing the book. <laughs> um, when the premise was revealed on page 70, it just wasn't something that I really wanted to continue on with the story, but I'm putting it in here because I think that you might like this book. It might be right up your alley. It is set in the Victorian period. There is romance that happens in this book. There are lady pirates. It, it's a good time. I love the humor of the book, but just the overall premise, it was just not enough for me to continue. So I just, I DNF'd the series. So, but I hope that you like this one and I hope that it just, it makes you laugh and smile for spring. First, I have to mention A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin. In this book, you're gonna follow Kitty Talbot who needs a fortune or rather needs a husband who has a fortune and she only has 12 weeks to save her family from ruin. That's a lot of pressure. So of course, if you, as you can imagine, there's a lot of mayhem that ensues, and also for the time period that this is set in, which is during the Regency era, I think this makes it a perfect candidate for a great spring read. So I have a couple of books that a couple of followers recommended to me on Instagram, and that is Nora Goes Off Script by Annabelle Monahan and The Party Crasher by Sophia Kinsella. Both of these I have not read, but I do have those on my TBR and I absolutely cannot wait to read those for spring. So I think I have rambled on enough about books at this moment in time. Let's actually go forward to movies. And the first movie that I have to start out with that has my heart and that my friend and I very much disagree on together is the 2005 Pride and Prejudice adaptation. It is the only thing I think her and I really don't see eye to eye on. She loves the BBC version, which she has every right to do so because it is definitely, definitely most like the book. It is very close to it. However, the 2005 is more of the romanticized version. And of course, I love that one. It's one of the only ones that Hollywood has done that I absolutely just adore and love. The Sense and Sensibilities one, I will go for the BBC version, but 2005 Pride and Prejudice, in my eyes, is top tier. You might have a different opinion. Don't come for me in the comments, but I just think it is just so beautiful. Just the cinematography, everything about it is just perfect for a great spring movie. I also think Tuck Everlasting, like I just mentioned earlier, the book, the Walt Disney production of Tuck Everlasting is, is just so beautiful. Even though it definitely is nothing like the book, it is still a very beautiful depiction and you can watch it without having read the book if that is more your speed. So I definitely recommend checking that out for sure. This one might sound a little weird, but because it has prom season in it, I think 10 Things I Hate About You is the perfect comedy for spring. It is one of my all-time favorite classic teen comedy romance movies. Still to this day, I absolutely love Heath Ledger in this. Oh, I just, I love it so much. Of course, Mary Poppins, I think is a very classic one for springtime. Big Fish is a great one for spring. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, absolutely hilarious movie from the 80s. I I love these classics. They are just some of my absolute favorites. Sound of Music, of course. It is 
it's just the setting that it is set in. Oh, I really want to go there. I really want to go to where they were shooting the sound of music and just have my Maria moment twirling around on the hilltop with all of the grass and the wind. Like, oh, I just, I, I love this movie. And it's a musical as well. In my head, musicals are just absolutely perfect for spring. Don't know why. Don't have a rhyme or reason for it, but just in my head, that is what I associate with spring so much is musicals. Of course, The Wizard of Oz. This was a classic that I absolutely love. I loved it to the point so much when I was a kid, I would call myself Dorothy. I would introduce myself as Dorothy. Yeah, yeah, fun fact. <laughs> but I, I think it is just a great movie for spring. Just all of the beautiful colors, the beautiful poppy fields, just everything about the movie is just so wholesome and I absolutely love it. Like I mentioned earlier, I mentioned the book version, but now of course we're going to mention The Secret Garden as well for movies. Also, You've Got Mail. I just love these type of rom-coms for the springtime. Also, I have to mention one of the very few shows that I think really embodies that springtime because of like that that era that it's set in, the Regency era. And I think you know what TV show that I'm getting ready to talk about. And that of course is Bridgerton from the set to the filming, just everything about it, the costumes, just, it is, it is all so beautiful. And it is one of the only shows that I can think of that I closely associate with spring. I just, it's just fantastic. <laughs> okay. I think I have rambled on enough. Why don't we just get into doing some treats now? <laughs> this is a treat that I have seen in a lot of Japanese YouTubers vlogs and I thought it would just be perfect for spring because all you need is white bread, cream, and strawberries and I found the most delicious strawberries at my local grocery store and I was so excited so all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your white bread and you're gonna cut off the crust and you're gonna make the bread into a square shape next we're gonna take the whipping cream and we are actually going to put it on our bread and we're gonna take a butter knife and spread it if you don't have enough or it seems like it's not enough you can always add more whipped cream to this the next step is to attempt to cut your strawberry tops into a little heart mine as you will see in a little bit did not turn out that way at all and my strawberries were huge compared to my bread so i ended up only using two strawberries and then cutting a half of another one to fill up the bread Now I'm just adding whipped cream to the sparse places and spreading that even further before we add our top on. I might have squished that top part a little too much, but we're gonna take whipped cream and put it all around the sides and just again spread with your butter knife. In hindsight, I probably should have used a different kind of bread and maybe also a different kind of cream. I'm not really sure what other kind of cream I could use. If you know, definitely leave a comment down below because this treat was so delicious. Now we're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. And while that's going, I'm just gonna take one of my little strawberries and just have a nice little snack because why not? Strawberries and whipped cream are just, are so good. While I'm waiting for that to chill, I'm just going to go ahead and get started on making the robin's nests. This treat is super, super easy to make and I am just now lining my cupcake tin with some little cupcake liners that I found in these really pretty pastel spring-like colors. Next, you're going to just make sure that your chocolate is all gooey and melty. And now, after that's done, we're going to immediately add our shredded wheat because you don't want to give the chocolate any time to cool and harden during this process. Because the shredded wheat mixed with the chocolate, that's what's going to make these look like little robin's nests. Now 
to really top these off, we are going to use some candy eggs. I just use the Tootsie Roll brand, but it actually looks a little more realistic if you can use the actual Robin the Egg brand um, because the eggs are so small and they actually look like little bird's nest. But you just pop these into the fridge for about five or 10 minutes to chill and harden up and then they are ready to serve. Such an easy treat. All right, now that our strawberry and cream sandwich is chilled and ready, we're gonna take a knife that I actually kind of heated up so it would cut through easier. And obviously this step did not turn out the way that I planned it, but both of these treats ended up tasting so good and so easy and delicious for a springtime treat. And last but certainly not least is all of the activities that we finally get to do outside in spring because of the warm weather. Like taking a leisurely walk outside or a leisurely hike. And if you wanted to romanticize this even further, you could wear a nice flowy dress and just go for a nice leisurely walk and just pretend that you're in the Victorian era or in the Regency era with your cup of tea and just take a leisurely morning stroll. I think that sounds perfect, especially for the warm days that are coming up. That just sounds really, really awesome. <laughs> of course, picnics in the park or picnics under a shade tree that's behind your house. Getting and dusting that bike off and getting it out, taking it out for a nice warm ride. And going to the markets again. I am so excited because I probably will end up filming some of it, but my friend and I are going to a huge farmer's market that is held in a college town that's only about an hour and a half away from us. But I am so excited for all of the markets to open again, all of the vegetables, all of the florals, just everything about it. I am just so excited for it to happen. That is all that I have for you in this video. I really, really hope that you have enjoyed it and that this video gets you excited for spring. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you in the next one, my friend. Bye.